Hello, and welcome to this short module on reset strategies. What I'm going to cover are reset design issues, and then how synchronous reset is implemented, and how asynchronous reset is implemented, and what are the relative merits of the two reset methods. The reference is uh, this Cummings reference, uh, which is in the module and also can be found readily on the web. The reason um, I'm including this module is reset is actually very important. Uh, if you don't distribute reset correctly, you can result in a situation where the chip will never work or will require unusual heroics to get it to work. Uh, so only work for uh, debug purposes, for example. In addition, this is a common interview question. So I thought I'd prepare you uh, for the interviews you're facing uh, after you finish up here. You might recall that the ro role of reset is to get the chip into a known state. Uh, you're, you are, as consumers of electronics, you're all familiar with reset. Uh, after power up, the machine starts in a specific state. Or there might be a way to distribute reset, such as a reset button, which might be uh, actuated by a paperclip, uh, or by a combination of buttons. So what reset does is it actually resets a set of registers in the chip, and that is all the state registers. It is just about always inserted on power up. The way that is done is a circuit that actually detects that the voltage supply is rising, and that circuit distributes a reset across the chip. It sometimes also has a dedicated button or a combination of buttons. Uh, those of you who are familiar with PCs are familiar with control out delete. The reason that was chosen by the PC designers was is a very hard combination to hit accidentally. So this is easy to say, send global reset to all state registers. Well, that leads to an obvious question. What are the state registers? And the generic answer is that any register that controls what the chip that does next. This includes finite state machines, uh, you want the finite state machine to start in a known state, so the state vector, the state flip-flop set, must be have reset asserted to it to start the finite state machine in a specific state. All status registers, for example, registers that res store the result was zero or the result overflowed, must be reset. You don't want them starting in an arbitrary state saying, oh, well, the ALU just overflowed when it didn't. Is just started in an incorrect state. In general, other registers that feed inputs to finite state machines or counters uh, must also have reset uh, uh, applied to them. Also in general, many data path registers don't affect state, so don't need reset applied to them. For example, registers in a data path solely, they're there solely to add pipeline stages. The intermediate pipeline stages don't need to be, have reset applied to them. That said, some teams uh, have a, a dogma that reset must be applied to all flops. This increases the size of the chip, but it's very safe because if you distribute reset to all flops, then you're knowing then you know you've covered the flops that matter. So reset is going to many of the flops of the chip, maybe most of them. So it's got a fairly heavy capacitive load, so some attention must be paid to how reset is distributed. And what's very important is that the uh, release of the reset must be, uh, all, all the flops in the same clock domain must be released from reset in the same clock period. Normally, reset is active low. Uh, the reason for that is the high state is more noise tolerant, but that's really beyond the scope of this class. So here's an example of a bad pair of reset signals going to two different flops. Flop one is being released from reset in this clock period. Flop two is being released from reset in that flop clock period. This can lead to errors because flop one will start operating correctly in this clock period while well, flop two won't operate correctly. It'll still be in the reset state. So it's important that all these release, releases uh, occur in the same clock period. 
So the reset is asserted on the low to high, high to low signal, but it's deasserted on the low to high normal operation starts. Normal operation must all start in the same clock period. So this is a bad example of, of a set of reset signals. And this is what can accidentally happen if, if, re if attention is not paid uh, to how reset is distributed. So let's deal with synchronous reset and then asynchronous reset. Synchronous reset, the reset only happens on a rising edge of the clock. So reset goes low before the rising edge. At the rising edge, it's asserted on the flop. The advantage of synchronous reset are that the flops are smaller. You don't need logic within them uh, to, uh, to apply reset asynchronously. In fact, you don't need the uh, reset logic at all in the flop. The way you implement, the way the tools implement a synchronous reset is with the ZAN gate on the D input. So the D input is added with reset. So when reset is high, that is not being asserted, D is fed into the D input of the chip. When reset is low, the output of the ZAN gate is zero, and Q1 on the next rising edge of the clock will be put into the zero state. That is, it will be reset. So you add, so the tools add an AND gate to a uh, to the data path, to the logic chain between each pair of flops where the second flop is being reset. This adds delay to the logic chain. This increases the clock period and it slows down the chip. You might think this is a small disadvantage, it's only one gate delay, but it could be a significant portion of the clock period and the uh, chips are competing on how fast they operate. So this is it's rare to use synchronous reset because of this additional delay. There are many designs where speed is very important uh, and so this is not used. Another disadvantage of synchronous reset is it requires the clock actually be running during the reset. Uh, this might be a problem if you have clock gating. Clock gating is used to reduce the power of a design. You turn off a clock if it's not needed. Well, if you're running at a particular time where part of the chip has the clock deasserted, uh, that is the clock is gated off and reset is applied because the chip gets into a, a, a funny state and needs to be reset, the reset might not occur correctly because there's no clock being distributed. So this can be problematic. In general, the tools pull the AND gate close to uh, the uh, flop uh, where you want it to be uh, so, that, so that it gets the cleanest, op cleanest set of signals going to the D input of the flop. One advantage of synchronous reset is you can withstand glitches on the reset signal. These are okay if they're not occurring near a clock edge. One piece of guidance in the reference that I've, I've referred to is to don't mix non-reset flops with resetted flops in the same procedural block. Here's an example of code of mixing a reset flop with it feeding into a non-reset flop. They're in different procedural blocks. The behavior of this code, this is only executed on a positive clock. That is what makes it synchronous. If reset is low on the positive edge of the clock, Q1 is equal to zero, else Q1 equals D. And the second flip-flop is the standard uh, formulation. The reason why you don't put Q2 equals Q1 in this flop is that if you put them both under control of the else statement, then what you're actually saying is that reset n must be high for Q2 equals Q1, you're introducing a gate uh, into the uh, second flop as well. You want the uh, deassertion in particular uh, to be away from the clock rising edge. So the reset rising edge must arrive outside of the setup and hold uh, and all in the same clock period. The setup time for reset is sometimes called the reset recovery time um, because you, you've got this additional gate here. Uh, so it does, does change the setup uh, timing a little bit. Um, but, what a, but basically what you're concerned about is if the reset signal was deasserted close to the clock edge, you could get metastability 
That is, you don't cleanly come out of reset and start correct operation. So this requires careful design of the reset tree, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, if this is a problem, one thing you can do is slow down the clock. But that's not that's only useful in debug. Uh, it's not useful, obviously, if you make a product. Even though I'm showing very narrow reset pulses here, they're usually quite wide, going over many clock periods, so that uh, the uh, uh, the falling edge is is not a problem, but the rising edge of the reset is. Uh, so I'm going to change this in the notes to say right falling edge because it's the falling edge that's not the problem. So here's a couple of examples. Here we have the uh, reset D assertions well away from the clock rising edge and both in the same clock period. In contrast here, we have one reset D assertion uh, in uh, close to the clock period and we have two reset D assertions in different clock periods. This one is in the first clock period. This one is the second clock period, which will lead to incorrect operation. One way to distribute reset is to use the flops themselves. So what we have here is an example of using flops to distribute uh, a reset that's intended to be applied synchronously. We use synchronous resets, to synchronous flops to do this. Uh, we apply a reset to a normal D flip-flop. We have a pair of them so the, to remove metastability. Remember, uh, if you don't know what the arrival time is of the signal, you often have a pair of flops, sometimes three flops in a row, so it's to remove metastability. Uh, if, if this signal uh, violates setup and hold, it won't matter because once it gets to the second flop, it will be behaving correctly. Um, remember, we don't really care how many clock delays there are in distributing reset as long as the reset arrives at the flops all in the same clock period. So we have this pair of flops to remove mass stability. So we now have a reset signal being distributed across the chip. This is arriving. This is being launched T clock to Q uh, after the rising edge of the clock here. So if we're not worried about mass stability from this point forward, as long as these traces are sufficiently short, uh, because the, the uh, reset here will be arriving uh, well before the setup time. And we do this we, we do this another stage or other stages as needed before we have the final flop that again is keeping the uh, reset signal uh, away from the clock edges uh, being distributed to the actual resets on the flops in the uh, in, in the determine the state of the machine. So you use a tree of flops with some care in the delays of the lines uh, to distribute reset if you're asserting reset synchronously. Asynchronous reset requires additional gates inside the flop. So it is larger, but it's faster because those gates are not in the critical path or the logic paths that determine timing. No clock is needed, so if clock gating is off and reset is asserted, there's no problem. Uh, if the clock is running, of course, you're still worried about metastability, uh, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And in addition, since it's asynchronous, any glitches on reset can cause a false reset. So some additional care uh, might be needed to prevent uh, noise on, uh, being introduced on the reset tree. From a coding perspective, the trigger statement, the always at statement, says pause edge clock or neg edge reset. So if either of these events occur, the execution of the block is triggered. If it's the neg edge reset event, then reset will be low, Q1 will be set to zero. If reset is not low, uh, then the, this behaves like a normal flop, always at pause edge clock, Q1 equals D. And again, we, set, we put any non-reset flops in a different procedural block. Again, we use flops to distribute the reset so that it behaves cleanly from a timing perspective. We use asynchronously reset flip-flops to do this distribution. 
Uh, basically, we use this pair of flip-flop concept again and again in the distribution tree uh, to uh, make sure the reset is clean and is arriving with good timing. The way this works is when reset goes low, the second flop is put into the reset state, pulling this line low. When reset is released, because this D input is tied to one, this, this flop will bring this line to one, and in the next clock period, the reset line will be brought to one. The reason there are two flops is because if this reset signal here arrives close to the clock edge, you can get metastability. That is, it might take a, a couple of cycles for this flop to operate correctly. That's okay, however, because we really don't care how long it takes for reset to be deasserted, as long as it's deasserted cleanly. So, uh, and this one is sent to this flop with good timing characteristics, uh, and we use this pair of flops uh, to, uh, to get rid of any metastability so that uh, the timing of the, uh, the edges on this, the timing of the rising edge here is T clock to Q after the clock. So from this point forward, as long as these lines aren't too long, uh, this, this reset is, is being deasserted away from the clock edge. To distribute this across a chip, across multiple modules, you just make a tree of these. Here's the root of the tree feeding a hierarchy, which feeds a lower level of hierarchy, uh, so that uh, uh, you, uh, the, these lines are kept short, so that in the end, the reset arrives at all the flops in the same clock period, and away from the clock edge is deasserted clock to Q delay after the clock edge. That brings us to the end of this module. Some key points to remember. Uh, the reset gets the chip into a known state. It's a very important factor of design in any chip that's, that's more than just a simple set of logic gates. The reset deassertion must occur away from the clock edge. This, uh, and this reset deassertion must arrive at all the, clock, all the flops in the same clock cycle within any clock domain. Synchronous reset requires a carefully designed reset tree. I gave an example using flop pairs. Um, flop pairs can also be used to design uh, an asynchronous reset uh, tree. Synchronous logic, synchronous reset results in slower logic. Uh, so uh, that, that's, that's important. Uh, quite often that's a limiting factor in the performance of a chip. So synchronous reset is not used where clock period is important. And again, as I said, a flop tree is used to distribute reset. I hope you enjoyed that module uh, and uh, feel free to ask any questions in the forums. And, uh, uh, and thank you very much for your time.